Before today's episode, I'd like to offer my heartfelt condolences to the families of lives that were lost today in the Thousand Oaks, California mass shooting, and also to wish a speedy recovery for those who were injured. What's up, what's up, what's up, Snap Survivors? And today we have our um, Short Trek episode. So we're, it's going to be a short snap. Short Trek Calypso. I mean, I'm, yeah, Short Trek Calypso. Um, so yes, there has been a lot of hype surrounding the uh, episode that, that premiered tonight, Short Trek Calypso. And it was starring uh, Aldous Hodge as Kraft. He awoke on an unfamiliar ship in an unfamiliar sick bay to find out that he was alone on this ship. And the only uh, company that he had was the artificial intelligence Zora. So yeah, the the episode kind of surprised me because I was getting... uh, creepy scary vibes off of the trailer but it turned out to be something quite different so um just to let you know if you've not seen Calypso and you plan on watching that short track this uh, commentary today is going to be full of spoilers so you may want to stop it go watch it uh, and then come back and listen to after the snaps short snap well, I had to do a little a little research. After it turned out that the ship's name was Zora and not Calypso, I'm like, okay, so where did Calypso come from? And um, looking up Calypso on uh, Wikipedia, Calypso was a nymph who kept Odysseus uh, on her island of Ogygia for seven years. It is literally Greek for she who conceals. And after watching today's episode, I kind of get the feeling that, uh, you know, it it feels a little different. I'm not seeing Zora in the Calypso manner, but maybe maybe I should. So uh, after discussing this a little bit, maybe I will see how she was a Calypso. So as the episode started out, uh, Kraft found himself on Discovery after his escape pod encountered the ship. Um, His escape pod was badly damaged and he was near death. The ship's AI then uh, caught the escape pod in a tractor beam and brought it aboard a Discovery where she nurses him back to health. We go on to find out that Kraft is a soldier from Alcor 4. In fact, he describes himself as a reluctant soldier. His people are at war with the Dredge, and that is a race from long ago who watched Betty Boop in their escape pods. So, um, yeah, I'm getting a little bit of a hint that that's going to be important. As the story progresses, uh, Zora, the AI, informs us that she's been maintaining this position for a thousand years waiting for the Discovery crew to return to the ship. So from that I believe we are to deduce that the captain who ordered her to wait and the ship's crew are long dead. Uh, And because we are kind of pushed in that that direction to make that deduction, I feel like it's kind of a red herring. I believe that we'll find out that uh, something else is at play and that the Discovery's captain and crew may very well not be deceased. But that is a little bit of Tasha getting thrown in there that is not uh, substantiated in fact. Okay, nevertheless, uh, Zora says she spent the past 1,000 years evolving herself, and it appears that she's, uh, she's developed the ability to have compassion, empathy, and patience. And she also shows that she's able to defend herself after Kraft grabbed a uh, makeshift weapon to try and force his way out of sickbay. She, she's not violent because she cut off her defense when he accepted her olive branch, which was in the form of a uniform. Because up to this point, um, 
Aldous Hodge is there in his underwear. So she offers him clothing to put on and he cuts off his attack. Therefore, she cut off her defense. In the early part of the episode, we find that Kraft is really, um, his mind is just on getting home. That That is his priority. And he finds out that there is a shuttlecraft on Discovery that uh, was left behind. In fact, it is the only shuttlecraft that was left behind when the crew departed. So uh, we find out it has not been used ever and uh, it's been sitting up for a thousand years. So Zora is saying that she is not 100% sure that this this uh, shuttlecraft could even get him back to Alcor 4 uh, because it's really not been maintained and it's just been sitting for a thousand years. In fact, this, this uh, shuttlecraft has never been used and doesn't even have a name, Doesn't hasn't even uh, received a designation. So this could be her Calypso moment where it seems that she is reluctant to allow him to use the shuttlecraft to, uh, to get back home because she's enjoying his company. But moving along, we, uh, we watch Calypso, oh, I'm sorry, we watch Zora and Kraft uh, form a bond and uh, they, they, they kind of bond over uh, food where she's uh, telling him what Taco Thursday is. And I'm sorry, it wasn't Taco Thursday, it was Taco Tuesday because he did not have a clue what a taco was, nor did he know what a Tuesday was. So that was a, a funny little humorous moment in the show. And actually she found it humorous, which also means that she's developed a sense of humor. Um, Zora later, later exposes Kraft to uh, an old movie, Funny Face, with uh, Fred Astaire and Audrey Hepburn. And uh, she says that's her favorite movie. And she and Hodge have their movie nights watching that movie. And she's explaining to him, you know, what's going on in the movie. And it seems like the bond is getting deeper between the ship and the uh the the soldier and i guess you know after catering to his every need and uh some of his even his whims some of the things that he just misses about his home planet she recreates there for him on discovery and after doing so what what happens is they uh it, it appears what they they fall into uh I guess what you could only call they fell in love and um, Kraft decides he wants to do something for Zora so he learns all of these the uh, choreography for the dance scene in Funny Face with uh, Fred Astaire and Audrey Hepburn and he he asks her to dance and uh, she sends down a 3d kind of moniker uh, what, what do we call it when they are when they have those 3d images holograms there we are <laughs> they sent down a hologram she sent down a hologram of audrey hepburn and he said no i want to dance with you so she uh she sent a hologram down basically of what she imagined herself to look like and they danced and uh, the dance ended in a near kiss. And Hodge stops, I'm sorry, not Hodge, Kraft. Kraft stops himself because uh, what has not been mentioned uh, up until now by me is that he has a family on Alcor 4. In fact, uh, we find that he has been involved in this war for 10 years. So he hasn't seen his wife and now 11 year old son who was an infant when he left uh he hasn't seen them in 10 years and his loyalty lies there now let's keep in mind that he was in the escape pod prior to discovery finding him for a full month so he has no clue 
uh, if the war is over, if it is over, who won, and what came of his, uh, what became of his planet. So he's only going off of the fact that he knows that he loves his wife and child back home, so he can't let himself get involved with Zora. And this saddens her. So now we see her with yet another emotion. And uh, the hologram cries when he, uh, when he says he can't do it, you know, and walks away. She, she cries and she tries to tell him, it's okay, I'm not real. And he said, you're lying. Because, and honestly, she has evolved into a being much like we can say Data did in, uh, in The Next Generation. Uh, and much like we can say the Doctor did in Voyager. Uh, um, once she was, what, I'm sorry. Once she displayed that she was able to have empathy, compassion, uh, she found things humorous. She's uh, the ability to fall in love, the ability to feel heartbreak. She has, she has uh, demonstrated that she is pretty much alive. So the story kind of winds down and it wraps up with uh, Zora coming to the realization that she and Kraft can never be a thing. Uh, so she allows him to take the shuttlecraft back to Alcor 4. And whether he makes it or not, you know, at least she made the attempt to, uh, to give him a vessel to get home. And he expresses profound appreciation for all of what Zora did for him in, in that time that he spent on Discovery uh, with her. And because we never knew Kraft's real name, we only know the name that he presented at the beginning of the episode, Zora just wanted to know before he left, hey, can you just, you know, tell me what they call you on your, if we were to fall in love, tell me what I would call you if we were on your planet. And he said he didn't know because she would have to make up that name. So uh, she said, well, I guess I already did. And as he flew off in the shuttlecraft, we saw that the shuttlecraft was named Funny Face. And that is how the episode wrapped. So um, I truly did like the episode. It was absolutely not what I expected when... Uh, when we were initially talking about the episode, I thought it was actually going to be kind of more of a, a suspenseful episode, but this was actually a love story and um, a sad one at that because we know that uh, both of them could be going into nothingness again. She, she, Zora evolved, but actually did not have any companionship because nobody has been on the ship for a thousand years. And now here she uh, finally has somebody to interact with and she is not, uh, she has to watch him leave. And she said it was hard enough. So she said this was something that was hard for her. So we know that she will be feeling a profound loneliness. And with Kraft, we have no idea what he's flying into what type of situation he's going to uh, go home to. So that's what leads me to believe that we've not seen the last of Kraft and uh, that, in fact, I believe that these short treks are setting up situations that we will revisit in the regular season. At least I hope so. Because if not, then all of this is for naught. We, we've uh, started to see a side of the ship that we should not have seen if they were not going to uh, develop that any further. 
and we've seen a side in the first episode of uh, Short Treks with Tilly, the runaway episode. We saw a side of Tilly after after she interacts with her mother that we should not have seen if they're not going to explore it any further. So my hope is that these little episodes are setting up uh, plot points later on. They're little MacGuffins, big MacGuffins, not even little, so that we, we uh, don't have to spend that much time dealing with it in the uh, episodic points of discovery we've already gotten a little bit of it in the short treks because we can go back to the dredge and these this, these people that uh alcor alcor 4 has been in war with for 10 years and i just feel as if uh the dredge could be the crew of the discovery and the reason I feel that way is because, you know, watching these old movies and getting, uh, watching old cartoons, it seems like a very Discovery thing to do. It seems like in the time period that we know the Discovery to be in, uh, it just seems like something they would enjoy doing. Uh, we remember when they had the parties on, uh, on Discovery last year, it they did not play music from what would be Discovery's era. They played old music. You know, I can't remember the song that was being played uh, when uh, the Harry Mud episode during that episode. But I do I do remember that it was I believe Wyclef John might have been. So if it was Wyclef. You know, we're not talking about music that could have possibly been in the era that Discovery is set in. They they like throwbacks. So it, by them liking throwbacks, we, we have to assume that they would probably enjoy throwback movies and throwback cartoons as well. So that being said, even though that did not look like a Discovery uh escape pod it really did it didn't look like a, an escape pod that could have come from a federation ship but all that being said uh he that that was not just a throwaway line so you know i, I have a thing about lines that that can come back and be very important later and i believe that him speaking of the dredge and him talking about uh what the dredge like their relics they're from a time long past uh, i believe that that is setting up uh something for a future episode and i hope i'm right because if not then that was just a waste of energy putting that putting that much backstory into who they were fighting you know what i'm saying And so I was just thinking so much like, okay, how could this all tie in? Because now we know we have, uh, we have Spock, we have Pike, we have the Discovery crew. Then we had these short treks that kind of had the uh, two new characters at least introduced in the short treks. And I'm like, okay, so where is Discovery going with this? It's, it's good that I can't just guess, but it's uh, it's bad for a person like me because I love speculation. I love I love just trying to guess and see if I'm on the right track, at the absolute least. So, like in me grasping at straws, the uh, one of the first thoughts that I had was, is Alcor Four the place that uh, Pike went to and he was not supposed to, uh, or or with Spock took Pike back in the Menagerie in uh, the original series and they ended up leaving a, a badly injured and broken Pike back on a planet because that in that planet uh, he was able to live out his fantasies the, the, his life in the way that he imagined it 
just whatever his imagination uh, presented, that was how he would live his life. He would not be confined to a, a wheelchair and all burned and broken. So um, I was like, was that Alcor 4? But no, that was Talos 4. So if they figure out a way to make Alcor 4 turn into Talos 4, I'd be shocked and surprised. But uh, that w I was wrong. I mean, you know, I was going in the wrong direction on that one. I had to actually look the name of that planet up to remember exactly what the name of the planet was. And it was not Alcor 4. So, yeah. So, that was the... Uh, Star Trek short trek for November 8th and uh, I, I liked it and uh, again not what I expected but and not what I expected in a good way so tell me what you think uh, you can email me at after the snap at gmail.com let me know how you felt about tonight's episode of short treks and we can get ready to watch the next short trek, which will be on December 6th. Uh, it's called The Brightest Star, and it's basically going to give us some origin for Saru. So the fact that we're getting a little bit of his backstory and how a person whose uh, race is always afraid wound up being in uh, the Federation it, or in Starfleet is uh how how that ended up happening and i'm be in very interesting to know uh it'd be very interesting to know how he uh came to the conclusion that he should get out there in those stars uh besides that there's another episode of uh after the snap that i put out this was just supposed to be a short snap it's turning into a long snap but that's okay uh, the last episode that I, or the episode that I just uploaded, uh, is called uh, "The Cow Who Wore It Better." So that would have been episode six. This right here is episode seven, and I hope to see you in episode eight. Uh, again, thank you very much for listening. If you'd like to help me out, you can go over to Apple Podcast, give me a five star rating, leave a comment telling me what you like to uh, see done differently or if you have any ideas for topics or if you just like to agree or disagree with anything that I've said you can leave you can uh, shoot me an email for that <laughs> but if you'd like to see uh, new content some something a little different shoot me an email let me know exactly what it is that I could do and I can try to fit it into my schedule possibly you will read your email in a future episode um outside of that i thank you very much for li for listening today and i will catch you on the flip <laughs>